Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome sports orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Jeremy Burnham. Dr. Burnham, welcome. Thanks for having me, Ed. I appreciate it. How did the journey begin for Dr. Burnham? Where did it all start for you? You know, I think it started for me the same same type of story or same type of place that it does for a lot of orthopedic surgeons. Uh, you know, in high school playing sports, I injured my knee and never really thought much about injury before then. But all of a sudden, when you can't do what you love to do, you start asking questions and you start trying to figure out how do I get back out there. And really was amazed at the amount of knowledge that the doctors that took care of me at the time, the amount of knowledge that they had, how they were able to tell me to rehab. And throughout that process of rehabbing my knee, I realized that sports medicine, is it's a team sport. There were a whole lot of people that were involved with me getting healthy and getting back on the field. And that's the first thing that really sparked my interest in sports medicine and made me realize it's such a collaborative effort and, and something that I wanted to do. Sports medicine is in particular, we're seeing more and more people get into the field. What do you think it's the reason for that? Absolutely. I think that the... The benefits of sports medicine are numerous. You could probably, we could probably rattle off 50 or 60 right now without even thinking about it. And I, and, and I realize that people now are noticing, okay, we want to get out there. We want to be healthy. In addition to that, there there's more access to sports, I think. So it doesn't matter how old you are or, you know, what your athletic level is. There's some type of sport that you can get into. And I just think that you see the participation in sports increasing across all age levels. Uh, in really all geographic regions throughout the U.S. And um, and that's one of the things that interests me about the field is that, you know, there you may have an elementary kid that's getting hurt and needs to get back on there, or you may have a, have a professional athlete, or you may have a weekend warrior that's been running marathons for the last 20 years. And so it's always a challenge. It's always variable. You don't see the same thing over and over very much. By looking here, at your educational background, you earned a Bachelor of Science degree in biology from Louisiana State University, LSU, and then you earned your doctorate, uh, your Doctor of Medicine from the LSU Health Sciences Center in Shreveport, and then you did you participated in a residency program in Lexington, Kentucky, at the University of Kentucky Medical Center, and you did a fellowship at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. I want to talk a little bit about this fellowship you did at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. Being at the University of Pittsburgh for fellowship was really a phenomenal time for me, and, and that I got a lot of exposure to collegiate and professional athletes of multiple different sports when I was there. Uh, and that was, that was one of the things that's been really rewarding to me is to see how people do that on a high level and all that it goes into keeping somebody healthy and, and then getting them back after they've had an injury. Excellent. I want to talk about the specific ligament tears in the knee. I was going through your biography and doing the research, and again, you spe in sports medicine, you have a wide variety of surgeries that you perform from the ACL surgery, knee surgery. Explain to our audience about the specifics of the ligament tears. You have uh, PCL, ACL, MCL, the LCL, and the MPFL. Explain to our audience uh, the specifics and, and what those are the definitions of those ligament tears. Absolutely, and I, I can tell you've done your research because you nailed that. So, um, and that you know that list is pretty much sums up a lot of the ligaments in the knee, and that that's one of the things that's a real interest to me. And as I went through my training, you know, the reason that I went to Lexington, Kentucky, and the reason I went to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for the UPMC Sports Fellowship was because I was interested in the knee, and I found that some of the best knee people in the country and the world um, were at those two places, and. And so that was my drive, and, and I really am focused a lot on the knee, and as you mentioned, hip arthroscopy as well. The knee is probably the most common sports injury that requires surgery, and that's across all sports. It's not really limited to one sport, and so there's a lot of people that end up with knee injuries. And unfortunately, a lot of times, these are ligament injuries, which means that they, they usually require something to be done. Some ligaments can heal with bracing and rehab. Some have to be surgically reconstructed. Probably the ligament that most people are uh, most familiar with is the ACL. Uh, that's short for anterior cruciate ligament. That's a ligament in the middle of the knee that controls the rotation and translation of the knee. And it's the most commonly injured knee ligament requiring an operation. You see it really across all sports, and people associate it with football often, but it's actually probably more common uh, proportionally in soccer, even basketball, volleyball, different sports like that. But you see people even, you know, uh, uh, badminton or uh, ping pong 
uh, competitive ping pong. People tear their ACL. So it's a really important ligament. It controls their stability of the knee, the rotational stability of the knee, and so people have a hard time doing cutting or twisting tasks if they tear their ACL. And so that's something that I've really really put a big focus on. I've done a lot of research on the ACL, and that's one of the big focuses in my practice. The ACL is one of those ligaments that probably 30 years ago we really didn't know how to address it, and we didn't have very good return to sports rates. And what I love about the ACL is that there have been some really big advances in ACL surgery. We used to uh, not know exactly where the ACL should be attached in the knee, and now we have some technology where we go in and we know exactly where that ACL is supposed to go. So we've adjusted our surgical techniques over the last several years to do more of what we call an anatomic ACL, meaning I want to put that ACL back in the exact spot that it was in before it tore. We also individualize ACL surgery more now. So used to everybody got the same surgery. Now we individualize it according to the athlete and their own anatomy. And that's probably one of the things that I enjoy the most about the ACL is the challenge of, of really matching the ACL surgery to the patient and to the sport that they're playing and all those types of things. There are you know, other ligaments in the knee. One that you commonly hear about is the MCL, the medial collateral ligament. That ligament is also important in the knee. Fortunately, it's in a place in the knee that oftentimes those tears heal by themselves. And so that's one of those tears that it's, it's a multifactorial team approach. If somebody injures that, that ligament, they're going to spend a lot of time with their physical therapist, with their athletic trainer, and with their coaches getting back there and getting functional in the field. What about the LCL? Is the, when you tear an LCL, what does the LCL stand for and what is the recovery process for that torn ligament? That's a great question. The LCL is another one that you commonly see injured across multiple sports. When people tear their ACL, they they have a lot of trouble. If they don't have an LCL, they have a lot of trouble getting around and, and having a stable knee and making quick cutting movements. The LCL stands for lateral collateral ligament. It's on the outside of the knee. The MCL is the medial collateral ligament on the inside of the knee. Unlike the MCL, which oftentimes can heal itself, the LCL often doesn't. And so... The LCL we treat well, oftentimes by reconstructing or re- recreating that ligament, and so it doesn't have much of a healing capacity. And so if you tear your LCL and you have an unstable knee, oftentimes we have to go in there and take another ligament and recreate the LCL. That's a several-month process. Just like ACL rehab is a several-month process, LCL rehab it takes several months. And one of the things that we have learned, both LCL and ACL surgery, over the last, you know, five to ten years probably, is that it takes a lot longer for these ligaments after ligament reconstruction to be ready to get out there and compete again. We used to say that people could go back and three months after they had an ACL surgery, and now we're realizing, and I don't know if most people out there realize it, that it takes a lot longer. The average time uh, with somebody that's had an ACL reconstruction in the NFL, the average time before we allow them to go back and play football again is 11 months. So that's almost a year. And LCL rehab is pretty similar. Oftentimes you see an LCL tear in conjunction with an ACL tear. And so the rehab really kind of parallels each other. But we've learned that we have to give people a lot longer to let that ligament get strong, let the body to incorporate the ligament, and then to actually retrain all of the muscles and the nerves in the legs and the hips and even the trunk and the core to be able to fire in a coordinated fashion again so that people can go out there and play sports and not um, not re-injure themselves. Well, that's very informative. And again, you, you certainly know your stuff with the educational background that you have. And again, it says that you've treated athletes from the NCAA, the NFL, the NHL, Major League Soccer, the NBA, Major League Baseball, uh, professional ballet dancers, and weekend warriors, as you mentioned earlier. So definitely you're someone that has done it, and you're definitely continuing to do it. So Dr. Burnham, uh, quickly, are there any future projects that you're working on? Yeah, you know, one of the things that, that we continue to work on that I think is going to be an ongoing project for us is doing research on uh, how to improve ACL surgery and ACL recovery. And when we look now, the return to play after ACL surgery is pretty good. It's a lot better than it was probably 10 years ago. There's a lot going on and a lot that we're learning about it. Uh, I would like to have, we don't have this or even close to this right now, but we would love to have 100% of people that have ACL surgery get back to playing the sport that they want to play, and that's kind of our goal. And so really doing research from a lot of different areas to try to find out how do we best treat people with ACL tears. Uh, We are also working, one of the things that, you know, you mentioned working with professional athletes, and I think the thing that that taught me is how much it matters when you have a good team of people 
that are taking care of an athlete that has an, an injury. And really, it doesn't matter if that person is a professional athlete or a weekend warrior. They have the same injury. You need to treat them the same way. And so one of the, the big things we're doing is just trying to continue to build our sports medicine team that has people from multiple disciplines so that if you come and see an orthopedic surgeon with a knee injury or a hip injury, you're not only being treated by the orthopedic surgeon, you're going to be treated by a physical therapist, by an athletic trainer, sometimes sports massage, chiropractors. There are a lot of people that are involved in getting getting someone, getting an athlete, not only back on the field, but back on the field at 100% of what they were before they got injured. And I think that that's a, a, a long-term and short-term goal that we're working on is we're trying to really assemble the best team and the best people to get involved with them. Quickly, Dr. Burnham, where can they find you on social media? And if you have a website, let our audience know about that. Absolutely. Uh, my, my website is jeremyburnhammd.com, J-E-R-E-M-Y-B-U-R-N-H-A-M-M-D.com. Uh, Instagram is Jeremy Burnham MD, and if you uh, search my Facebook page, it's also Jeremy Burnham MD. Well, you heard it from him. He's a gentleman that knows his work, and he's very knowledgeable in his field and continuing to make strides in the advancement of sports medicine. We have the sports orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Jeremy Burnham. Dr. Burnham, thank you so much. Thank you. It was an honor. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Remember to click like share and subscribe and thank you for watching.